So my talk today will be a little bit different than uh, some of the cell and gene therapy related talks that you've been hearing today and into the next couple days. But I work for a company called 3Scan. Uh, we're a computational pathology company based in San Francisco. Uh, we work with partners and both on the tissue engineering space as well as academic medical centers and um, organoid design companies. Uh, we have a robotic microscopy platform that sections and images tissue blocks simultaneously. So we get really high resolution, micron scale, cell body staining resolution uh, through whole, whole depths of tissue blocks. Uh, so what you see here is a prototype of our digital lung that was kind of derived from uh, some of the imagery that we took uh, using our KESM, the knife edge scanning microscope. Uh, so what you see here is uh, the first digital lung spanning the first two airway generations. Uh, kind of important because it's informed by anatomic and, mic and uh, microscopic data from an actual human lung. Um, but more importantly, it's, it's continually updated and customized to address interpatient variability of both along longitudinal pathways as well as interpatient variability and heterogeneity associated with uh, normal and diseased lungs. Um, we can also customize this to meet morphological parameters of patients and the specs of our uh, partners that have evolving printers. Uh, to date, we've been working with 3D Systems, which is one of the most notable 3D printing companies in the world, um, and a few partners in the pharma space uh, that are particularly interested in developing drugs against uh, pulmonary disorders. Um, so on the right-hand side here, you see the power of this method, where we're rapidly designing and iterating through different network configurations of the vasculature surrounding a single cartilage ring. Uh, this is a 3D printable model, uh, in the, the basis of which has been printed in collagen. So our partners print these structures in, into collagen scaffolds that can then be cellularized by either their partners or uh, another third party. Um, moving on. There we go. Uh, so this is kind of an, an, overview, an overview of the workflow for how we generate the data. Uh, so you see here, uh, following resection, um, tissue samples are fixed in formalin um, and then and better than paraffin, uh, and then a whole block stain. So we don't do individual uh, section staining. We, we stain the whole block um, in mount, which gives us some unique opportunities to develop cool staining protocols, uh, but also it, there are some limitations around antibody staining and uh, neuronal staining. But we have developed protocols for H&E structure staining, as well as some, uh, some neuronal stains. Uh, so once the whole block is embedded, we didn't digitize it with our knife edge scanning microscope, which is an ultra microtome blade that, uh, that takes the block and sections and images simultaneously, uh, pulling a ton of data off the scopes, so talking on the order of a couple terabytes per block. In contrast to traditional digital pathology, which is just a whole side scanner, uh, taking an image of a single glass slide, a section on a single glass slide, we are completely glassless. Uh, so that kind of reduces the, ne the need for uh, the histo preparation in that step. And then post-imaging is where I get to have a lot of fun and play on the uh, 3D reconstruction and image analysis side. So re a lot of cool opportunities, but specifically today we'll be focused on uh, the work that we've done in regenerative medicine and the work that we will continue to be doing in the, the space of organoid design and development. Um, so following digit digitization, uh, it is run through, uh, the, the raw data is taken, uh, images processed and analyzed, cleaned, uh, turned into a mask, uh, which is converted into a contour or a quadratic Bezier curve. I'm a mathematician. I work with a bunch of pathologists, which is a really fun collaboration and pretty rare in this space. Uh, so I get to develop some really interesting methods to go from imagery to Bezier curves to SVGs, and then eventually contour data, which is refined into a 3D mesh and exported as a printable file. Um, so this is just a demonstration of the vast scale of, of, the, of the sizes that's, uh, that, that the lung has spanned. So traditionally, people that have been doing bioprinting for lungs have used silicone casts, uh, which gives very few details about uh, sub-100 micron level resolution, uh, so the vessels in the airways, basically. Uh, so structurally, it's pretty clear, but uh, getting the resolution that we can provide is, is pretty rare and a unique opportunity for us. Uh, moving forward, um, so on the top left here, we have the trachea, which is generation zero, uh, which is at, with an average luminal diameter of around 18 millimeters. And then right around the 14th generation, we have the transitional, transitional bronchioles, including the terminal bronchioles, which signals the beginning of the respiratory zone. 
Uh, and at the terminal ends of the airways, we have the diameter sac, the alveolar sacs, alveoli, with an average diameter of two to 300 microns. So that's kind of where we're operating in where our value proposition is in this space, is focusing on that sub, you know, 500 micron, uh, you know, structures that are difficult to pick up with uh, CT, MRI, or silicon cast. Um, moving forward. Uh, this is just kind of an overview of how we do our anatomic projection mapping. So this is a raw image stack. This is not our imagery. This is from the Visible Human Project that's supported by the NIH. However, we were able to apply our methods and demonstrate extensibility across a variety of different imaging modalities. Uh, so you can see here that uh, from the bird's eye view, we take a series of axial anatomic images that are stitched together and used for annotation. Uh, se segmented features can be overlaid on the slides. Um, as we see here. And then from there, uh, on the left, you can see the bronchial tree, uh, from the trachea down to the segmental bronchi. Uh, in the middle, you see the pulmonary veins and arteries. And then on the right here, uh, we can see the entire pulmonary vasculature and respiratory system reconstructed into one single model, which there we go. Uh, so that's a work product that was delivered from this open source NIH Visible Human Project data set, uh, but it's representative of some of the work that we've done with our proprietary um, imaging system, which is a knife edge scanning microscope. Um, moving on. So we, we realized, and you know, being a mathematician, I thought, uh, and you know, my colleagues were thinking, do we need to go directly from imaging to model, or can we use mathematics to just model this in silico uh, to make the process a little bit more customizable, uh, reproducible, and uh, continuous, more so than having to take individual images? And we want to maintain patient specificity, but we also want to be able to address uh, interpatient variability and develop models that can be used uh, as a platform uh, rather than just for individual models uh, for, from a given patient. Uh, so we kind of started moving forward. Um, we generated a microscale map of the lung, and as we utilized the following process, we began with a series of chasm derived microscopic images that are stitched together and used for annotation. Uh, the, the board certified pathologist that I get to work with uh, goes through and t takes a pen at the pathologist of the future station and annotates and marks up the vessels and airways. Uh, then we use computer vision to segment features and convert that into a 3D mesh. Um, and once that is converted into a 3D mesh, uh, we get the opportunity to look at, um, on the left, we have a 3D model of a portion of the trachea, including the trachealis muscle, cartilage ring, and bronchial wall. Um, in the middle here, we have a portion of the trachea uh, combined with, with splines from our larger anatomic model. So this is an, an example of some of the generative, model that we're do the generative modeling that we're doing, which is a hybrid model of imagery as well as generative design informed by the anatomical atlases that we have at our disposal. And then finally on the right here, you see an amalgam model which combines our microscopic data with the anatomic data, uh, this being the word products uh, and representation of the, uh, the vasculature and the airways from generation zero to through two. Um, and you know, it, basically we, we're extending our imaging capabilities in silico uh, based off the idea that we can use fractal biology uh, we, you know, in biology, we know that many structures are derived by growth from smaller and often simpler units, which is similar to how fractal algorithms generate progressively more complex structures. So you can think of like a, uh, like a, like a Mandelbrot set or something like that, if you guys can imagine any cool mathematical visualizations that follow fractal patterns. Uh, and we basically use some of the same principles to extend our microscopy data with computation. Um, and as we, as we begin to accumulate, um, really massive terabyte, petabyte scale lung data sets. Uh, we started generating mathematical descriptions of the tissue, uh, which are basically like parametric equations that allow us to customize pretty much on demand the structure of the lung, uh, maybe to address things like pulmonary arterial hypertension or uh, some sort of disorder of the lung that is related to uh, uh, some sort of ob obstructive flow. And eventually, we want to get to the point where we can develop models for fluid dynamic simulation and hemodynamic modeling uh, so that our, our customers and our partners can use the data that we generate from our imagery, hybrid with uh, generative modeling, to uh, have a full closed-loop system of the 
vessels and airways down through the 18th generation of lung uh, to, to um, uh, simulate uh, vasodilated therapies in silica. Um, and as we continue to move forward here, um, just demonstrating the evolution of our, of our uh, generative work. And this kind of encompasses uh, the essence of what we're doing, taking a traditionally very manual field of pathology uh, and circumventing digital pathology, which is just taking a picture of it uh, and then still you know, being able to use computer vision to analyze the slide. And we instead take a full stack look at the entire histology process from resection through embedding and imaging. And our knife edge scanning microscope with the ultra microtome blade enables really high throughput section in, the, in imaging at, at incredibly high resolution. Uh, and I would say, compared to the Allen Brain Institute or you know, a couple other projects, we probably have the most microscopy data in the world. Uh, and so there's a whole world of you know, possibilities that we can do with this. But as of right now, uh, a lot of our efforts are focused in the, gen in the generative modeling space and uh, developing structures both for bioprinting and potentially downstream usage, usages for in silico drug discovery and uh, uh, hemodynamic modeling. So in summary, uh, this is kind of an outline of the efforts that we've done. There's a lot more in the pipeline uh, as, as we grow our company from relatively small to much larger in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we intend to uh, incorporate a lot more of the work that you all have been talking about here today and try and partner with some people in the cell and gene therapy space to see if we can use data that we're producing, our computational team, and our expertise on the, on the structure side of things to bridge structure and function so that we have, have a more comprehensive and holistic view of how disease, both the etiology, pathophysiology, and progression of disease states. Uh, so with that, I think I'm good to go, and I'll be around if you have any questions. Thanks.